So welcome to 2021 and Good Vibrations introduction to our schedule for January and um, hopefully the rest of the year. And um, I just wanted, my name is Karen Murray and joining us today will be Molly Long and Christine Rudberg and also Andrew Seifert. That's right. And he's already here. He's got his pirate uh, face on. Molly's, Molly's joining us right now, too. It usually takes a few minutes for everyone to get connected. <clears throat> so again, I'm Karen Murray, and I teach yoga for Good Vibrations Yoga and uh, on Zoom classes. And my Zoom schedule is on uh, Tuesday and Friday mornings at 10 a.m. I teach a class called 50 Plus Strength and Yoga. And in that class, we do yoga. We um, lift some weights for the arm strength. And then we do um, some seated poses and core strength poses. And then the always and uh, at the end a lot of relaxation so that our body can integrate all that work and end up being stronger and not sore um tuesday evenings i do a uh, yoga for everybody just a basic um yoga class it's great for unwinding after work that's at 6 p.m tuesdays and on thursday nights um um, that one's kind of been in flux, but it's a self-care yoga community type class where I encourage everyone to um, talk to each other back and forth. We do some yoga, um, put in a little philosophy, help us deal with uh, these trying times, and also uh, learn some self-care techniques, natural self-care techniques, like uh, foot reflexology. So um, we bring something if we like to use lotion to give ourselves a hand and foot massages. So it's uh, very nurturing. It's all about like taking an hour for self care. And then on Sundays, a yoga, uh, Itlin path of yoga class, which will include, encompass all of yoga, not just asana, that's the physical practice, but also um, learning how to withdraw your attention for a better meditation. Um, learning a little bit about the philosophy is very supportive in how you view life and helps us to be a little more detached about events and feel more centered in ourselves and uh, who we really are. It's kind of like a self-coaching program. So um, right now I, I promised I would do a little sun salutation tutorial and then after that I want to play a short video that Cassie sent me. Not all of our teachers were able to join us today. So I'm going to play just a few, a couple excerpts from a couple of our classes that are ongoing every week. Um, and that's it. And then I'll turn it over to Molly after that, Molly Long. So some salutation and you can join along if you'd like. I'm just going to do the basic uh, sun salutation, Surya Namaskar A. And we begin by standing at the front part of the mat. Your feet are about hip width apart. They can be closer. Just so you feel grounded in the feet. And you want to take a little time to get centered before you begin. So bring your palms together, touching your thumbs to your heart center. And bring your attention inward. 
Find your breath. And just allow the tension to drain away as with your attention and your breath. And we're gonna move with the breath. So take a deep inhale and then exhale and bring your arms down to the side. Standing up tall, inhale and reach your arms up. On the exhale, we're gonna fold forward from the hip hinge. Try to keep your spine nice and straight and long. You can slide your hands down your legs, go wherever your hamstrings allow. On the inhale, come up halfway. Stretching out, pull the shoulders back. On the exhale, we're gonna come down onto the mat and step back into a plank position. And we're gonna do a modified, so we'll bring the knees down first. And keep your belly lifted as your elbows come back alongside your ribs. Chest down and then lower the belly. Point your toes behind you. Inhale and come up into Cobra. Really stretch yourself along. On the exhale, you want to keep your hands right about where they're at. Press up. Feet hip width apart. And then the upper body, you want to focus on stretching that up nice and straight. Extending the spine. You can slightly bend the knees if you have tight hamstrings. Holding this and breathing. Try to balance some weight towards your feet too. Attention to your breathing. Then on the next inhale, look up towards your hands. Walk your feet up towards your hands. Lift up halfway. Lengthen your spine. Exhale and fold a little deeper. And inhale and lift up. Reach your arms up. Exhale, bring your arms down to the side. So that was one. I'll walk you through it one more time. It's always nice to do. Like a, a teacher once told me, if uh, all you can do is three sun salutations every day, that's a good, good daily practice. We'll do three. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale, step it back. Lower knees, chest and chin. This is grasshopper. Inhale, cobra. Exhale into downward facing dog for five breaths. Inhale, step your feet forward, lift your gaze, lengthen your spine. Exhale and fold forward. Inhale and lift up, reach up. Exhale, bring your arms down to the side. Take a breath, full breath. And we'll do one more. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale and fold forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen your spine. Exhale, step it back. Lower down for grasshopper. Inhale, cobra. Exhale into downward facing dog. Last one, five breaths. 
Now, if you're just starting and you need to rest during your down dog, you can also come down onto your knees. And inhale, step your feet forward. Exhale and fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, arms down. All right, thank you. That was uh, Sun Salutation tutorial. Now I'm gonna um, play a um, little introduction for you. A short video that Cassie. Hi, I'm Cassie J. Rose, and I'm a 500 hour certified yoga instructor. I'm currently teaching Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. a candlelight yin yoga class. The whole purpose of yin yoga is to really restore the body, stretch the muscles, and balance out the more vigorous or active things that you do during the day, during the week, or as part of a vinyasa yoga practice. In all of my classes, I like to start off with a really relaxing warm-up just to get the blood flowing to all of your joints and muscles, as well as getting us sort of in the mindset to meditate, stretch, and relax down into the mat. After that, we could work into some slow sun salutations or possibly holding some more restorative poses that really help you restore the fascia and move into the deepest stretch possible. I also like to incorporate certain props like essential oils or Palo Santo, candles, pillows, bolsters, sometimes resistance bands, different things like that to switch it up. But the theme is always relaxing and really more into the yin yoga practice that is going to relax you and restore your muscles. I thought today we could work into a little bit of my yin yoga warm up and that'll be a little bit of a preview for the classes that can come and maybe you can tune in Wednesday at 30 to experience the rest. So for a yin yoga class, let's start in a nice comfortable seated position and you can close your eyes here. Start by bringing your attention to the breath. Start to end up your nose. And exhale out the mouth. The hands can fall onto the knees. You can either sit cross-legged, or if you want to put one foot out in front of the other, that's fine as well. Or if you want a little bit more of a stretch to start off, you can bring one foot on top of the other knee into a lotus pose or a half lotus. So bring your attention to your breath and on your next inhale, raise the shoulders up to the ears and exhale, roll them down the calf. Inhale up to the ears once again. Exhale, roll down the back. Let's do it twice again. Inhale up towards the ears. Exhale, roll the shoulders down. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, roll them down. You can go ahead and break the eyes open now. And let's go ahead and bring the arms out in front of you, sort of like Frankenstein arms with the palms facing your body and the hands, um, fingertips pointing towards the floor. Go ahead and grasp your left hand with the right. And gently pull the left fingers back towards your body, stretching out the top of the left forearm and the wrist. Just being really gentle here, not pulling or straining. Take one breath together here, inhale. Exhale, release. And you can switch to the other side, grabbing the right hand with the left, pulling it back towards your body. And this type of stretch can feel really good if you're someone who works at the computer all day, or even if you do a lot of vinyasa classes and you're kind of doing those chaturangas a lot. Big inhale. Exhale, release. 
And now switching back to bring your left palm facing out and the fingertips up towards the sky. Grab the left fingertips, pull the back towards your shoulder, back towards your left. And come back to the breath here. Big inhale together. Exhale, release. And switch to the other side. Release the right fingertips towards the sky. Pull the right fingers back towards the shoulder. Big inhale. And on your exhale, gently release. Bring the hands back towards the sides and inhale, raise the arms all the way up overhead. Reach, reach, reach. And on your exhale, let the right arm fall down towards the right hip. Lean towards the right. And on your next inhale, come back up through center. Both arms up. You can look up towards the ceiling if it's okay with your neck. And on your exhale, lean to the left. Side stretch to the left. Keep breathing to all corners of your torso here and stretching out. And on your next inhale, you can come back up to center. And now we're going to transition into all fours, tabletop position. And if you're new to yoga, tabletop position is very important, but alignment is also important as well, too. So make sure that your hands are directly below your wrists. Knees are below the hips. And on your inhale, drop the belly, shine the chest forward, reach the tailbone up towards the sky. And when you exhale, push into your hands, round the back. Separate the shoulder blades. And on your exhale, round up the belly. Chest forward. Inhale here. And exhale last time. Push into the hands. Separate the shoulder blades around the back. And from here, come back to a neutral spine. And inhale, raise the right arm up for an open twist to the right. And when you're ready, bring the right hand back down. And now we're going to set the right foot on the outside of the right hand. And slowly begin to wiggle the back knee back, moving into a lunge. And you can keep wiggling the back knee as far as you um, can go into the feeling of stretch in, on the inside of your thighs and on the front of your left hip. And stay up on your hands here in this low lunge or as your hips open if they allow you to you can slowly make your way down to your forearms keep breathing into the right hip flexor right hip left hip crease breath take you deeper and closer to the ground. And on your inhale, come back up to your hands if you were not there already before. Keep the back knee where it's at. Wiggle the right foot inside the hands. And now we're going to switch the weight into the back the straightening the front leg coming into a half split. And in a typical yin class that's an hour long, we would hold stretches like this anywhere from three to five minutes. But for the sake of expediency, we can keep it here for this. On your next inhale, bend the right knee again, coming forward to your lunge, 
Weight is in the left hand on the left of the right foot. Open up again to the right. Just a simple twist. Stacking right shoulder on top of left if possible. Opening the chest towards the right, towards the ceiling. And then cartwheel the arm back down. And you can bring the right knee back to meet the left. Coming back to our tabletop pose. Just check in with the cat cow once again. Inhale, drop the belly, try and step forward. Exhale, push into the hand, separate the shoulders. And coming back to neutral spine. Let's go ahead and work through the series on the left side. So inhale, keeping the right hand where it's at, open to the left. It's open. Exhale, you can spin the arm back down to all fours. Inhale, bring the left leg up in between the hands. You go ahead and slide the right knee back. So you're feeling a stretch in between the thighs on the hip flexor. You can begin to walk the left foot on the outside of the right hand. It's also called the lizard pose. And if your hips are feeling tight, you can stay up on your hands, or as they loosen, you can gently come down to your forearms. Inhaling back up onto your hands if you're not there already. Walk the left foot in between the hands and shift the weight back to the straightening the front leg. We'll lower the front leg in a half swing. Just being gentle here. Inhaling, bend the left leg, replace the right hand on the, to the right of the left foot. Open twist once again. And when you exhale, frame the foot with the hand, bring the left leg back to a tabletop pose. Bring the toes together, separate the knees, and push back to a child's knees. And you can stay in child's pose and work into a shavasana or meditation, but that's where I'll leave it for our preview today. As I said earlier, my classes are Wednesday nights, 8.30, candlelight, yin yoga. Be sure to tune in. It's always a really restful and relaxing time. And I'm always open to suggestions or any new ideas or anything that you would like incorporated. Thanks and have a great new year. All right, thank you. Molly is on next. Hey, everyone. Let me just get set up here. Uh, my name is Molly Long, and I'm really excited to be here. Let me adjust my video so you can see me. And I'd like to start uh, right away in an easy seated pose. So and Molly, your uh, your camera and your, looks like your camera's off. Oh, oh, I mean, nope, I I'm, can see her. I'm from oh, okay. I'm calling in some good vibrations. Okay. Keeping it real. Yeah. <laughs> Staying consistent, right? <laughs> All right, so I'd like to begin in an easy seated pose, um, making your way onto your seat, adjusting, moving the flesh around, the goodness away from those bones. Um, 
feet can be tucked in or spread wide, whatever feels good in your body. And once you've settled and gotten those wiggles out, I invite you to decide where you'd like your palms to rest, whether that be on your knees or in your lap or at your sides. And if it feels comfortable to you, maybe you blink your eyes closed or soften your gaze. Then move your focus inward. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the gratitude I have for the year past and the safety and good health that I've been able to maintain, the connections I've built over the last year and the opportunity to practice yoga with all of you. And as you sit here, maybe you notice your breath flowing in and out of your body. Maybe those breaths are flowing in through your nose and out of your mouth or a combination. And maybe you notice as you bring your awareness to your breath, it starts to deepen. And I like to begin my classes by asking the students what it is they'd like to focus on over the next hour, whether that's a specific body part, a pose they'd like to try, or an idea. I like to think that my classes are an invitation for exploration and a time to tap into our intuition. If you're ready to move on, gently blink your eyes open. With an inhale, we'll lift our arms up and overhead, reaching tall. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center, coming into prayer pose. Feeling the thumbs pressed against your chest. Maybe you take a deep exhale here. We'll do two more of these. So inhale, reach those arms up and overhead. Exhale, hands come to touch, hands to heart center. And one more. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Noticing how it feels to link your movement to the breath. So with your hands at heart center, feeling the connection from the palms to the fingertips, spine is tall. We'll begin to drop our right ear over our right shoulder and sweep your right arm behind your back. Maybe you find the elbow crease of the left arm or the right hand finds your low back. Whatever is comfortable in your body this morning. Actually, it's the afternoon. So as you have your right ear hovering over your right shoulder, play around with your gaze, lifting and lowering your chin. Gaze can move from the floor to the ceiling. And invite your breath and the awareness of the breath 
into your body. And as you flow here, maybe you want to take some stillness. And find that really good spot through the left side of your neck. Doing a quick scan, noticing where you can relax and release. You release your right hand from wherever it was, and then we'll roll our chin towards our chest and take this on the left side with left ear hovering over a left shoulder. Option to take your left hand behind your back, finding that elbow crease, or maybe it pauses in the mid back. And again, play around with your gaze here. Moving with your breath. So of course, that's what yoga is all about, the linking and the moving of your body, your breath, as well as those meditative moments. Option to find stillness. Release your hands to find your knees, drop your chin towards your chest and begin to take half circles or full circles with your head. Maybe you get your spine involved a little bit. Moving in one direction, you might notice some cracks or creaks. And know that that's a safe place to be as long as you're not feeling We'll take it in the opposite direction. Taking up our spines, our shoulders. Hmm. And let's return to center to find some stillness. Maybe you switch out whatever leg was in front or adjust your seat. We're gonna push, we're gonna intertwine our fingers in front of our body and push our palms away from our chest. Maybe you round your spine, coming in at cat spine, tucking your chin into your chest. With an inhale, lift those palms up. And take some gentle side to side bends here. I promise some hip openers. I feel like we got a lot of good hip stuff in our last segment. So nothing like a full body mini section. Once that feels complete, let's release our hands and take the left leg wide, tucking your right foot into that left thigh. Maybe you bring your hands to your sides and square that spine nice and tall. With an inhale, we're gonna lift our arms up and overhead, shift your body over to the left and hinge at the waist as you bend into a forward fold, any amount. Your hands can be next to your shin, next to your knee. Maybe you find the bottom of that left foot. Again, whatever feels comfortable in your body this afternoon. You might need to adjust your belly and play around with head movement. Reminder to release any tension you're holding on to that you don't need. We'll take three breaths here. And on your next inhale, gently lift yourself from your legs. We'll sweep our right hand behind us and sweep your left arm up and overhead as you lift your hips towards the sky, opening up through the left side body, the left hip, 
Maybe you make arm circles with this left hand moving in one direction and then the opposite. We'll eventually release our hips back down. Coming into a butterfly pose, so bending into your left knee, bringing your, the bottom of your feet to touch. Decide where you like your feet to land. They can be tucked into your pelvis or maybe extended. And if you have a block or blankets nearby, it can be nice to set them underneath your knees for some extra support. Wherever you've landed, find where you'd like your hands to be and we'll round our shoulders up and back, lifting your gaze towards the ceiling and then hinging at the waist, belly, chest, chin, come forward into your forward fold. Three breaths here. on and inhale gently lift yourself back up and we'll take our right side so extending that right leg bottom of left foot finds the inner right thigh you might need to adjust your seat here we'll meet with our arms up and overhead frame that right leg as you hinge at your hips and fold over any amount you might notice that this side feels different than the left. And that's A-OK, -okay, perfectly normal. Or maybe they're similar. Maybe this side is more open or a little tighter. So simple acknowledgements that allow you to be in the moment. Three more breaths here. With an inhale, gently lift yourself up, sweeping that left arm behind you, lifting up with your hips, and open up through that right side body. Option to take arm circles, moving in one direction, and then the opposite. One of my favorite things about yoga is that you get to move your body in weird, funky ways. So I'm always trying to find a fun new move. We'll meet with our hips back down on the ground. And we're gonna come into pinwheel pose. So what that looks like is a 90 degree bend in your left leg. So in front of you, sweep your right leg behind you. So it's kind of got that 90 degree shape or 45 degree, whatever feels comfortable in your body. Your knee might find the arch of your left foot or maybe they're separated. So again, take the time to feel comfortable and get settled. Decide what shape is gonna be the best for you. And we'll plant our left hand over to our left side and bring your right hand to your right hip. We're gonna come into some gentle movements and twists here. So lift your right cheek off the ground, face over to the left, and then return that right cheek back to the ground. And we'll do this a few times, moving with your breath. You might notice that left knee starts to lift or that right back knee starts to lift and that's, it is what it is. So we're opening up our hips, our lower spine, starting the process of digesting the New Year's meal.
and we'll find stillness coming back to that right cheek and start to bring those right fingertips over to the left. We'll come into a deeper twist here. So with an inhale, lift your spine tall. Exhale, hinge over any amount. You can stay up on your elbows. Maybe you come down to your forearms. Or if it's available in your body, you can come to rest with palm stack, forehead on the back of your hand. This is also a great spot if you have a bolster or a block to rest it underneath your chest. We'll take three breaths here. And when you're ready, lift yourself back up and we'll take it on our right side. So switching out that right leg in front, left knee behind us. Again, maybe your left knee finds that arch of the right foot. Maybe it doesn't. You can bring your left hand to your left hip, sweeping your right hand over to its side, lift and lower. Your left side. Moving the breath. We'll find stillness in the center. Take it a moment to breathe and lift your spine tall and then walk those left fingertips over to the right side. Lift up using your inhales to lengthen and exhales to fold in any amount on your right side. We have a few minutes left of class, but I teach Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. We do a slow flow for 45 minutes. It's a beautiful way to wake up in the morning. I like that slower pace really nice and relaxing. Then I also teach a vinyasa at 10 a.m. on Sundays, which again is yogi's choice. So whatever the students are feeling, we do love to try new things. With an inhale, let's lift ourselves back up through center. Sweeping this left leg in front. We'll meet with our knees bended and then windshield wiper your knees side to side. I'd like to take one last hip opener before I end. Coming into cow face legs. So tucking this right knee in, lift your left knee to rest on the right knee. So your knees are stacked, your hands might find your feet. If this is too intense, option to keep this right leg straight. You can even take your left ankle onto this left knee, making a figure four. We'll find stillness with that left leg on top of the right. With an inhale, lift your arms up and overhead. Exhale, bring your arms out to a T. We're gonna sweep our left arm underneath the right, coming into eagle arms. So intertwining your forearms, maybe your palms come to touch. If this isn't available, you can take opposite hand to opposite shoulder, almost as if you're giving yourself a hug. Where are your elbows resting? Maybe they can lift up your chest and come upwards towards your face. Maybe you're able to tilt your head towards the ceiling, coming into a little back bend. 
We'll eventually round our spines, bringing those elbows towards your knees. So not only opening up through the hips, but getting into the back body. Opening up the backs of our hearts, our shoulder blades. Inhale as you lift yourself up your center. Exhale, unwind, shake those arms out. And we'll do it on the other side. So right knee comes to rest on left knee. You have an option to take this left knee straight or maybe you tuck it in. You can bring your fingers to your toes. We'll meet with spine tall. Taking a breath here. Inhale as you reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, arms come to a T. Sweep that right arm underneath the left, finding eagle arms on our right side. Inhale to lean back as your elbows and gaze lift. And on an exhale, fold inward, drawing your elbows towards your knees. We'll take three breaths here. Inhale to lift and release. You can shake your arms out, shake your legs out. I'll be back to those windshield wiper. And I want to thank you all for coming today. Again, my name is Molly Long. I teach Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. and Sundays at 10. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Next is uh, Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Christine Redberg. You might not have seen me before or taken a class from me. And I just finished the yoga teacher training program at Good Vibrations Yoga. Um, a little bit about me. I've been practicing yoga since 2012. I've taken a variety of classes. Uh, restorative yoga holds a special place in my heart though. And I think part of the reason I enjoy teaching it and taking classes that are restorative is that I find it hard to find time in my personal life uh, just to take a break and relax. Um, a little bit more about me just so you can get to know me outside of yoga. I'm an engineer and I have many hobbies. I love being outside. So right now skiing and ice skating are taking up a majority of my time, uh, especially since this week we've had uh, some beautiful weather. So the class series I'm going to talk about today is part of my karma class series. So it's a part of the yoga teacher training program. So my class is titled Restorative Yoga and Poetry. So restorative yoga is yoga that's done at a slow pace and your poses are completely supported by props. And the focus for this class series is on mindfulness, breath, and stillness. So a couple benefits of restorative yoga might actually fit into your 2021 New Year's resolutions or goals, whichever approach you're taking to that. So restorative yoga deeply relaxes the body. It stills and calms a busy mind, releases muscular tension, improving mobility and flexibility. It can boost our immune system, calm our nervous system, uh, promotes mindfulness, like I talked about before, and it also encourages the transition into meditation, which some people can have a hard time like, getting into that meditation mindset or incorporating meditation into their practice. 
So a little bit about what you can expect to see in my classes. As far as the environment goes, it's pretty calming and relaxing, what you would expect for restorative. So you can dim the lights or have them off, up to you. You can turn your camera off if you feel like that's more comforting for you. Um, you're welcome to play some light music in the background. You'll be muted, so uh, it's, it's really up to you. And then you can incorporate some props like a candle to kind of create that mood. And then I will offer poetry readings while we're in that pose. So I read from the book, All Along You Were Blooming by Morgan Harper Nichols, I believe is how you pronounce her name. And so the poems are affirming, they're about self-love and self-discovery. And they're kind of similar to what you might hear in a yoga nidra script. So it'll walk you through a canyon or, you know, like you're swimming in a lake. They're very just like peaceful, um, but they're made to help you learn more about yourself and help you be true to yourself as you continue to walk through your yoga journey and your life journey. So for restorative yoga, we need multiple props. If you read the class description on the restorative yoga and poetry class, you'll have all the information you need to be prepared for the class. It will ask that you have a block or a book, um, two yoga blankets or towels, and then two pillows or bolsters. Um, whatever is available to you, you do not need specific yoga equipment. Uh, you should be able to find all of these around your house. And then sometimes I'll request a chair, but you should be ready. You'll have all the information you need. Um, the poses are held for a, a longer period of time in restorative yoga. So about five to 10 minutes, depending where, on where you are in the flow of the class, but it's not strenuous uh, because you are fully supported while you are in those poses. You can expect a longer Shavasana which is the favorite pose of many yogis. So that's something to look forward to. And then you can expect to feel calm and relaxed at the end of class slash when you're logging off of your Zoom class. So we're gonna do a demo. In the interest of time, we're gonna do Shavasana because I'm assuming you do not have all of these props near you at this time. So I'm gonna move these props off my mat but while I'm doing that, if you would like to lay on your back and then we can start preparing for a nice Shavasana. All right, so while you get on your back, you can have your feet, the soles of your feet on your mat, and then bring your hands to your rib cage. I'll just kind of take a second, kind of shimmy, shimmy around, maybe windshield wiper your knees back and forth, just kind of relax your spine. And when you're ready, you're gonna take your right heel and drop it down by the right corner of your mat. So you're extending your leg. And then you'll do the same to your left leg. You can take your hands and starting at the base of your neck, you can very gently run your fingers up towards the base of your head and set your head down on your mat. Then your hands will find your rib cage again. When you're ready, you can drop your right forearm and hand to the mat, left down to the mat. And then just close your eyes here. Take a second. And then notice if your hands or feet are touching anything. If they are, you can move them away from that object. And then imagine you're looking down on yourself with a bird's eye view and see if you can make your body symmetrical. When you're done with that, you can take a deep inhale 
Exhale. See if you can roll your shoulders back, just sliding your shoulder blades closer to each other, opening your collarbone, spreading it. And see if you can relax the root of your tongue. Your tongue will drop from the roof of your mouth. See if you can relax or let go of the, the butterfly of your nose. So kind of where it attaches to your cheek. Just let that go. See if you can relax your inner eel canal. And scan your fingers and toes and see if you can just let them go. And see if you can Remind your body that it is fully supported by the mat and the ground beneath it. Just let go and let your body sink further into the ground. Bringing your mind back to your breath. Sometimes when we're coming into Shavasana or taking a resting pose after movement, our mind can be busy. If you have thoughts that are popping up or just taking a visit, you can acknowledge them and send them on their way. You can revisit them after the open house. I'll read a sample of some of the poses you or poems you might hear in my class. So the first one is, an, is as follows. Dive in beyond the reef. And what will you call it? What will you name this grand adventure? Will you call it into the deep? The day I finally learned to breathe. The strength I did not know I would need. Or will you simply call it B? For after all, this is what you are doing. Discovering the courage living inside of you is not as distant as it seemed. No matter how this season ends, you will walk away knowing what you did not know back then. This year will not end like last year, nor any other year before. The next poem is as follows. I will let life in. I will not concern myself gathering gold and silver that can be taken from me. I have to trust there is more to me that goes beyond what I can see. There is more to me than what I know today. 
I will stretch my hands up to the sky to say, I am afraid, but I will try. I can know deep within my soul what it means to be free. I will not hold back for love has not held back on me. When you are ready, you can start to deepen your inhale. Welcome the idea of movement in your body. Start to wiggle your toes or brush your thumb against your fingertips. Maybe take some light and gentle wrist circles or ankle circles. Then when you're ready, you can roll to your right side, cradling your head, your right arm, knees bent in the fetal position. Just take a breath here. On your next Inhale, you can slowly push yourself back up to seated. Your head the last to rise. Eyes can remain closed. Place our hands on our knees, rolling our shoulders back. Crown of the head towards the sky. You can slowly blink your eyes back open. That's all I have for you today. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in some of the restorative classes. Thank you, Christine. That was great. Okay. My favorite. Andrew, are you there? I am indeed. All right. So unlike these other people who are gonna make you move around and do all this, I'm not going to make you do that. Well, I'll make you do it. It's up to you. But uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, the kind of how we got to where we are here with this crazy yoga world um, and, and my class offer that I'm doing. Um, so what we do, uh, what I'm offering is our, on a regular schedule, Tuesdays and Thursday, or no, Monday and Wednesday mornings, uh, across from Molly, um, uh, 7 a.m. class. And it's just a quick way to get you up in the morning. Um, you know, we all start the day out and oftentimes we just jump in and go, right? And when that happens, we, it's kind of like if you, if you started running and <clears throat> you had a backpack full of bricks, right? So we get up, we just move this backpack full of bricks around and it shifts. We kind of get pulled off balance a little bit and we try to compensate and run harder. At the end of the day, we're, we're doing all this extra work. So what I found is that if I do a little practice in the morning, not a whole lot, a little bit, I start to drop some of that weight off. I don't put those rocks in my backpack. And there's there's two ways that I, I look at this. So for me, it's it's not just the physical stuff. Because let's face it, you know, I mean, for you young kids out there, you won't have this happen yet. But you know, when you get to where I am, uh, you wake up in the morning, and you know, it's uh, it takes some more stretching and so forth to get you out, uh, get you moving. Um, my cat walking across here, so forgive that. So a little practice in the morning helps my physical body get moving. And when my physical body can feel like it's freer in the motion, um, then I can pursue the other things I do during the day and I don't feel like I'm blocked up, like I have a, a greater range of motion. I then feel more energized. So physically, I have more energy to my body. Um, I know Karen's taught, yawning on me. Oh, my goodness. No, I was trying to uh, cover almost these. Uh, okay. Uh, the other thing that happens when you do a morning practice is I fix this, you know. And if you've been in my class before, you know I talk with a lot. We have this negativity bias, right? We, we're hardwired as individuals to worry about what's next, 
like Christine doesn't know, but there could be a monster in that closet right behind her. And she's mm-hmm. not going to look because her hand's creeping out. And there it is. Uh, but no, we, we, we do this thing where we as individuals, as people, worry about what's going to happen next. And that's biologically baked into us because a long, long time ago, when we were on the plains of Africa, wherever we originated from, we were not the brightest. We were not the smartest or the best claws. So we were kind of easy picking. Um, so evolution gave us this perception ability to see things and to feel things. Um, it's kind of like a radar net. Like, you know, when you're going somewhere and your hair in the back, your neck goes up. Well, not for me, but for you. Um, that's a little thing that evolution gave us to say, hey, watch out. The challenges in today's world, especially in our hyper-connected world where, you know, the majority of the people, the first thing they do in the morning is they get this thing out and they go on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram uh, and they start seeing things. And right away, if I see something, the next piece is I'm comparing myself. Where am I versus where is this? Well, this is generally looks like right? you're down here and this is up here. And that's what we see. So if you start your day unconsciously with this negativity bias where you're not good enough, where everything is better than you have, and there's a bunch of want in your morning, that's a tough thing to overcome, right? So all day long, you have that going against you. And you've got that bag of bricks you're carrying around. So a quick morning practice, a way for us to kind of reset the day. Whatever happened in the evening, whatever physical breaks in our body, we let go. So to do that, um, we generally start with a couple sun salutations. And I do them nice and slow. So you don't have to do the sun salutation, but I would like to just focus on how it feels in your body. So um, close your eyes and just imagine yourself on top of your mat. And if, if you want to hop on top of your mat, feel free to. But just imagine you're there, right? First thing in the morning, you get up. There you are, you get your mat out. It was a little chilly on that mat. Should have brought that in earlier, but there you are. So go ahead and bring your arms up over your head and you have a big forward fold, right? You fold down all the way and you got a halfway lift, right? So you stretch that back up, drop your hands and then you, you shoot your legs back or step back to your high plank position. You lower down to your low plank, right? And you pull your chest forward with an upward dog and bring those hands forward, right? So now you're, your feet forward, your hands. You know, lift yourself halfway, maybe tip down again and just squeeze out and lift all the way back up. And there's your sun A, right? So what so often happens in classes is we roar through these because we know that right? we've all done sun A's about 10 billion times. But what I like about yoga and what I've learned over the years in yoga is it's not that you're doing this thing. You're not doing a sun A so you can get some crazy peak pose. We do the sun A because it's the sun A. We do the sun A because we want to be present in our body and present in what we do. So now take that sun A you just did in your mind where you, like I said, you know, who's done 108 before? You've done, you know, you know, let's face it, at about 20 or 30 or five, you're kind of like, I'm phoning this shit in. <laughs> I'm just going to blow through these. And we lose the whole method of it, right? And at some point we just get lost and, you know, who knows what's happening. So my challenge to you, whether it's in our class in the morning or your class throughout the year, is to just be 100% present. So let's rewind here, right? Let's go back to measure yourself on top of that or being on top, wherever you want to be. But let your eyes close. See yourself there. Now step to your mat and know why you're there. Like you're there for you. That's it. No one else. It's just you. You are the reason you are doing this practice. And when you say, here's why I'm here, because I care about myself, because I want to be better for the people around me that love me and that I love. And so I want to make sure that my son A in every breath is honoring that, right? And when you have that, what I call intention, that reason you're doing this, everything gets better. And we can stay present, right? The son A is in every part of our yoga practice is there to be enjoyed. Yes. Even the vasana, right? Even bow pose is there to be enjoyed because we're having sensations, right? When we stop having sensations, that's the end of this life, kids. So, you know, enjoy those, those sensations, whatever they are. There's no good or bad. It's just a sensation that will change the more you experience it. So here we are at the top of our mat. Now take a nice deep breath in. Really breathe in all the way. Fill all the way up to the top. 
Now on an exhale, I want you to get all that breath out. So squeeze that breath out, breathe in through the nose, get all the, squeeze your core, Uddiyana Baddha, squeeze that in. Now inhale, this time, hold the core and lift your lungs, feel your ribs expand, lift your heart. Your heart. Now squeeze out again, all the way up, get all that breath out. There you go, one more time, inhale. Now the arms come up and the breath fills up. Now exhale all the way, nice and slow, like a three count. You're folding forward, but all that breath come out here. Now look forward and fill your lungs again. Deep breath in, we're gonna have a halfway lift, right? Arch in the back, find some length, yeah. And then we actually put the hands to the mat and we step back to high plank. We stay in high plank, we're gonna drop. I want you to stay in high plank, take that full, full breath in and then exhale right there. Feel the core get tight. Now again, Deep breath in, now slowly lower down. You can go all of your belly, you can go halfway, doesn't matter. Next huge, full, deep breath in, you experience your heart lifts and your gaze goes up. And then exhale, you press back to downward facing dog. Now take three big breaths here. Every breath in, feel your hands press into the mat. Feel your arms press into your shoulder socket, your hips lift. Now, every exhale, any tightness along the back of the body softens just a little bit and your chest melts back towards your thigh. That breath in lengthens the back line of the body. And the exhale lets you fold a little bit more. One more really big breath in. So fill up, take this in. And exhale, soften. Yeah. Now the next inhale, I want you to shift your eyes towards your hands and then take little baby steps. Walk now, from this forward fold, you might bend the right knee a little bit, the left knee, feel your hips loosen up, right? That's that morning stuff, right? We were tight and sore in the morning, so let yourself loosen up a little bit. Oh, it feels kind of good. Yeah, there you go. Now, find that halfway lift again. Really fill up. Again, shift the knees back and forth, move your hips back and forth. This is really just an exercise in finding how your body is. Right here as it is. Exhale, forward fold again. Let yourself just hang out there. Let your head be heavy. Now, while you're sitting there, maybe you sway side to side a little bit. I want you to notice where your thoughts are. You know, is your breath nice and steady still like we started? You worried about what's next, like what's on my schedule? Nothing's next. The only thing that's next is your next breath. Stay right there. All right, take one more deep breath in. And exhale, fold a little further forward. Yeah, that's a little click, click in the back as your back opens up. And the big inhale takes us all the way top. So reach your hands up high over your head. Now we grab our right hand with our left wrist and pull ourselves over, right? Open up that side body. Stretch it up. Inhale, bring them back up nice and high. Switch your hands out. Exhale to the other side. There you go. Now big pull, inhale, let you all the way up. And then exhale, take a little back bend. Open up your heart. Let your head go back. Feel the heart up. Open up your throat. Open up for the day. And then go ahead and bring your hands to heart center. That's one sun A in a morning sequence. So again, there's nothing you haven't done before. But the difference is that we want to stay present for every piece of it. Because when I stay present during those moments, then what's next doesn't matter, right? I, I listen to the teacher, I'm following the cues, and I'm just letting myself be in this frame, be in the class. That's the beauty of yoga, you guys. As you've seen here, it can be done from anywhere. It can be done in any house, any room. It's really you and your breath and making some motion. But the thing that's important to remember is to be present. Like, we, and again, we have the sense to run away, like thinking about what's in the future. Oh my God, I've got this today and this, I'm so busy. Yesterday and oh, I'm so, you know, damaged or whatever the case is. None of that matters on your mat. On your mat, it's you and now, that's it. Every breath that's coming up is something in the future. It'll get there when it gets there. Every exhale is something in the past, left behind. Stay present. So that's my class in a nutshell, kids. Um, we also do all kinds of fun things. So some of us have been there, but we do yoga in different barns. So as things warm up, look for my yoga with horses series where we have uh, different fun things to do. And then of course, you know, Good Vibrations is tied in with the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. And even though the Arboretum is closed, we're still doing online classes and 
there's a really great set of uh, uh, workshops and retreats this summer. So again, take yoga anywhere you want, but right, it starts with you and starts with every single breath. So that's what I bring to the table. And uh, I just want to say thank you all for coming in. That's a big thanks to Karen for keeping us going as we've moved through various incarnations of this crazy studio. So um, yeah, that's, that's it what I got for you today, kids. Right. Any questions? Thank you, Andrew. Any questions, anyone? Any comments? You're awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and you've kept this thing going too. I we greatly appreciate. Yeah, that. I mean, it's a, it's it's definitely a strange journey, right? I I never thought this way doing, but you know, again, it goes back to the idea of like, if you stay present, right, the next best thing comes along, right? The thing that you're supposed to do shows up. The people that are supposed to be in your life show up, but I can't worry about, oh, this is horrible or this is that. You have to just be in the moment. And when you do that, you look around and like, oh, well, there's Karen. Karen's going to help make this work, you know? And oh, look, there's Christine and Molly and Lisa and all these people in chair. They're, they're all here on the same journey. But if I'm all worried about like, oh my God, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. I never see people where they are. So so you people here helped me do my work and I am very thankful for that. So Yeah, thank you. All right, happy new year. And thank you for joining me today. And Andrew and Christine and Molly and Cassie made that video especially for today. So um, thank you everyone. Namaste. Right. Namaste.